And hello fellow Taker Space Bandit here with another episode of World of Tanks And today I bring you two games Again, E50 and E50M Yes guys, I'm bringing you E50 and E50M again Aren't you excited about that? Well, to tell you honestly, these two tanks have lately been my both very favorite tanks that I play I enjoy them immensely They're absolutely fantastic tanks, but all we're gonna do today is uh, we're gonna focus on map strategy so I have two replays for you E50 replay is on the Pacific Island now I don't know why this map is back in rotation honestly I mean it has always been in rotation but for whatever reason it's back at tier 9 and tier 10s I've got drawn a few times at tier 9 and tier 10 on this map so I'm not sure why because Wargaming was saying at one point that this map will only be playable to tier 8 of something of that nature I don't remember exactly but there used to be a chart on a website where it stated that it was supposed to be for lower tiers so I'm not sure why it's back in rotation for tier 9s and tier 10s absolutely no idea and uh, in particular the weather variants too I mean uh, whatever I mean uh, it is what it is where it is a tier 10 game I'm in the E50 here so I'll show you a very interesting location here at E5 so when you drone on a south spawn E5 is the location that I would recommend for you guys to get to if you're in a medium tank simply because one you're gonna provide vital spots to your team and your artillery and two it is really a very probably the safest area to get to from south spawn in order to have protection when you're actually engaging the opposition okay so we got ourselves into the location i was telling you about but immediately we run into t110 e4 yay <laughs> this is this is going to be fantastic encounter for myself so uh first thing i do is i hide that's right guys i hide well first thing I do is I switch to APCR obviously I'm dealing with E4 over here and second I'm counting on my artillery and support from tank destroyer on the two lane to actually uh, start hammering the E4 for me that's all I can do at this time so I'm gonna try to kind of hang around here and once E4 decides to rush me like he does now I'm gonna have to fight and that's what I'm gonna do now but for whatever reason well, first of all, E4 bounces, so uh, I bounce and he bounces, which is strange. And second, he decided to run off, and uh, I don't understand what he, why he's actually doing that because I'm not such a hard target for E4. But all I have to do is go and get behind his back and uh, and take him out. In the process, I got myself in a very sketchy situation because there is a tank destroyer at D4. But luckily, he wasn't paying attention to me. So I'm gonna get back in the same spot here, lose my six cents. I'm gonna try to climb up again and see if I can spot some more customers. Yes. Oh boy. So now we have E75. <laughs> so we got rid of the E4. Now we're gonna have to deal with E75. Um, yeah, so we're gonna do the same thing, guys. We're gonna try to hide out here, see if artillery can hit him again. Try to take shots in between his shots. That's what I've done here. I took a shot because I knew he had, he had fired, so I ammo rack him at the same time, which was a good result for me. Now I'm gonna drop here until my reload completes. And if he decides to poke out, I'm gonna have to engage him. And he does poke out. So I take a hit, but I'm gonna decide to engage him here. So I wanna draw him out a little bit because he's in a tight spot. I wanna go around him. Obviously it's easier to penetrate him from the side. So I track him here, I go around him so I can get a side. And uh, and yeah, we can we can actually uh, start trading here. And I don't mind trading here because I do have a better reload. He does have a bigger alpha, but my mobility allows me to do circles around him. And that's what I'm gonna do here. So I use my mobility to my advantage. And again, I hide behind this little ridge here so that I can get my reload back once I reload. I take a shot at him because he exposes his sight here and uh, shouldn't have done so but I take a big hit over here he damages my engine although he's a one shot right now so I should be able to take him out yay so I take two tanks out all on my own E4 and E75 now 
I didn't have to use APCR over here. But once I was engaging E4, I switched right away because I didn't know what else was going to be up on that hill. So I didn't want to take any chances. And then E75 showed up, so I didn't want to be reloading at the time where he's trying to engage me because that's the biggest mistake, guys. If you're trying to switch shell types when you're close to one-on-one -on -one battle, then uh, yeah, it's going to bite you in the ass. So don't do it. And that's why I didn't do it. Now I'm switching to um, HE. Uh, I've seen the waffle here, so uh, I've spotted him. Obviously, I don't want to engage him head to head. Like, if he would charge me, he would easily take me out. I'm not sure why he decided to run off. But, yeah, I put a shell into him over here, and I tried hiding. I tried hiding because, obviously, I don't want him to rush me. And I want to stay alive until the end of the game. Right? So, I'm going to try to be sneaky here. I'm going to try to come around, use a different area to approach his location, and see if we can uh, finish this game off. So, so far has been pretty decent game. 10 shots of penetration. We have some spotting damage. Yeah, and this should be a pretty much a wrap up. The uh, enemy team has fallen apart. So we, we're gonna try to be cautious here. We don't wanna die. Uh, we're gonna take a few shots at him. And then from the right side, the E50 comes in and <laughs> rams the crap out of him. <laughs> that was actually pretty funny. Uh, see, I would be afraid to do that. Like, I, I don't want to throw my tank away, but some people just, uh, they have no problem. Anyway, guys, that's the first game. The location that I've showed you is very powerful, like I said, for spotting. And it's good for one-on-one -on -one fighting, because usually what you're going to find there is one tank that's sitting there, and he's going to try to overexpose himself to get you. So, yeah, pretty nice result, over 6.5k combined damage pretty decent game in the E50. Okay guys, uh, let's skip to the next game and the next game we're gonna have is on map Razieni or Razenai. I'm not sure how you pronounce that. So here again we're drawn on north west side so yeah let's uh, let's forward it a little bit until the action starts. By the way I hope you guys don't mind the music in the background I just thought I would give it a little bit of mood why not you know keep it a little bit on the low down if you know what I mean anyway if you're drawn on this side what I like doing here is I like if especially if you're in a fast tank like an E50 or any of the Russian tanks or any of the light tanks for that matter too is uh, come across the one or two lane and get yourself an early position at K1 now K1 if you manage to actually get there without taking any damage and you can see me being cautious here because obviously I don't know if anybody has pushed far up here but if you manage to find yourself in this location it's excellent for crossfire because you have uh, you have the little hill over here for protection yet tanks the opposition tanks like to creep up that little hill close to the castle there so you usually get yourself in a nice situation where you can create crossfire, right? And and that's why I like this location a lot. Uh, I've played many games out of this location and it's, um, yeah, it's it's a farming location, guys. In some, some cases, you, you end up here and there are tanks basically pushing this area. So you have a bunch of targets. So I'm going to try to stay here for a little bit. I'm going to try to hang around here, see if I can get some shots on these guys. I shoot at E4, but unfortunately I bounce. So we're going to have to, we're going to try to track him over here and see if someone can hit him while he's tracked. And hopefully he doesn't have a repair kit, so I can hit him again. But unfortunately my slow reload does not allow me to hit him again. And nobody really punished him while he was tracked. So I'm, that's unfortunate. But now we have T57 Heavy, <laughs> we hit him, uh, we track him, and uh, someone really, really takes him out. I don't know if it was Death Star, it must have been a Death Star, or maybe Artillery, I'm not sure. He got taken out pretty quickly there. Almost taken out, he's got sliver of health left, so... I'm gonna try to see if we can take him completely out. And uh, there he is, bye-bye. See you in the next game, bro.
Well, he must be kicking himself after this game. Quite a contribution. <laughs> um, okay, so we're gonna keep try to uh, stay in this location here and uh, get rid of this this Borsig if we can. Unfortunately, I missed a shot here, so we're gonna try to stay in this position and uh, hit him again. But unfortunately, I don't think I'll be able to find shot here. He goes down anyway, so we don't have to worry about him. Luckily, artillery is not paying attention to me, so we can move around freely. I'm gonna try to come a little bit closer now to see if we can spot more of the opposition. It looks like the Reds are pushing hard on the other side of the map, so there shouldn't be too many of them on this side. Um, we're gonna try to get closer to this T95. By the way, the E100 on the left side, me and him had a wonderful teamwork here, like this was a pretty good game for both of us. Actually, especially for him, it was a great game, so you guys will see the result at the end of the game. But I'm uh, taking advantage of him actually trying to engage the T95, so I came from this side, again, doing the same thing, trying to get T95 into the crossfire so that I can get his side because obviously this tank is so tough from the front, you don't want to face him from the front. So here what I'm going to do is track him in place and uh, hoping that E100 can finish the job and he does finish the job. So um, we clear this area here, we're going to try to move a little bit further. Unfortunately our team is dropping like flies and like all of my games lately, uh, well except for the first one in the E50 where you could see us rolling over the other team, that's been the story lately yeah I bounce off the artillery <laughs> right over there epic absolutely epic and this M103 I'm not sure whether he was actually I thought he was AFK so um, I just wanted to get rid of my uh, HE shell I loaded it for artillery but actually I'm still keeping it here because I'm hoping I can hit the artillery but Artillery gets taken out by E100, so I'm just what I'm gonna do is I use my HE shell to track the M103. So what happens here is if I track him, whenever E100 hits him, I get the tracking damage. So, and he's alive! He's alive, ladies and gentlemen. I didn't know he was alive. Honestly, like, why would you be sitting in that spot there and not moving? Or maybe he just woke up. I don't know. Or maybe he was just sleeping and just woke up I, I, I have no clue guys I don't know what this guy was doing he's just sitting there but he gets taken out and by the way my aim in this game wasn't fantabulous it was one of those games that you play you know first game out of the run you, you try to get into the groove and it just doesn't work so uh, yeah it's not the greatest but the result at the end of the game is pretty good so I hope you guys enjoy it and it's a close game as well so we're gonna try to take this artillery out. Now you can see the game is really close. It's 3v3 basically. So me, E100, and the artillery versus three tanks. So here, interesting situation. Basically, I was thinking to myself, should we be capping here or, or should I be doing uh, some spotting? And basically, I think the E100 tells me to go and start spotting and that's that was actually a very good decision because it turns out that the opposition is going to actually come into this area. So if no one would be spotting uh, for my team, especially for artillery and for the E100 and we were just sitting on the cap like lame ducks, we would have probably been all dead. And I have enough health to go up here and try to spot and engage if needed to take some damage, it's not a problem but I'm basically providing vital spots for my artillery and my E100 at this point. And I think that's what's actually won us a game because if I stayed on cap, this would have been a pretty horrible defeat, I would assume, but now this Leopard is quite dangerous here, so we're gonna try to track him. And if he doesn't have repair kit, maybe one of my teammates can take him out. If not, we're gonna try to take him out. He goes down and now it's only the IS-7 left, so we're gonna load the skill rounds to try to get rid of the IS-7. I mentioned to you guys before, whenever there is a close game and I'm in a carry situation, I will always load the skill rounds. 
And I'm not ashamed of it simply because everybody out there uses skill rounds nowadays. I still try not to use the skill rounds as much as possible, but in those situations, you cannot afford to miss a shot or not penetrate if you really want to win the game. You want to be able to do that. So, here we have the conclusion. We won this game and basically it was myself and E100 that won this game. I mean, I can say it straight up. 4,000 damage, 4,000 assisted damage, which brings the total to 8k combined damage for me. Also, 1,780 block damage, which is quite interesting. So E50M can bounce on shots. Now you can see E100, beautiful 5.3k damage. And I believe he had 8 kills as well. So fantastic game to the E100. Props to him for holding on and providing you with vital directions. See, sometimes you need teammates to tell you what to do. I mean, everyone has brain farts at some point in time while playing this game. So props to him for playing a great game. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you guys enjoyed the locations that I've showed you. Again, I'm trying to educate you as much as I can with respect to my knowledge and what I do in the game so that it is easier for you to get your damage. <laughs> okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time, happy tanking, Space Bandit, checking out. Oh, and last but not least, check out Clone Guy 72s channel and Gotta Dingy's channel. Their content is excellent. Actually, Clone Guy has been putting up some really ridiculous games lately, so I, I really encourage you to check out his channel. And Gotta Dingy just recently had a pretty nice game in the Japanese Heavy, which came right to the wire. So, yeah, check out their channels, and I'll talk to you next time.